following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and today we're on the most popular model from Andros Boatworks, the Tarpon 26. The design team at Andros tell me that they made this as a multifunction boat that can fish shallow water with its 10 inch draft and then work offshore with a sharp entry and running pad aft. It's powered by the 300 horsepower Evinrude E-Tech G2, and every 26 gets the engine mounted to a Porta Products 21 inch jack plate that plays well into the shallow water ops. The Evinrude E-Tech G2 300 is probably the most technically advanced outboard engine on the market in class. In a nutshell, this 3.4 liter engine provides four stroke fuel economy at cruising speeds with two stroke torque at the low and mid RPM ranges. Its strongest suit, however, is its low maintenance design which integrates the steering and gear shifting into the body of the engine with no external rods or cylinders. The E-Tech G2 has an internal oil reservoir, an 81 degree tilt range, and auto winterization. Its beltless magneto system is more reliable than the automobile type alternators used on most other outboards. The G2 is the only outboard engine that has direct fuel injection into the cylinder. The engine was designed from the beginning to be saltwater ready and carries a five-year factory-backed warranty, which includes corrosion. Let's start by getting around the water and see how the 300 performs. With the 300 turning at 5,500 RPM, we reached a top speed of 51.3 miles per hour. Best economy seemed to come in at 3,500 RPM and 29.7 miles per hour. That speed produced an 8 gallon per hour fuel flow that translated into a range of 267 statute miles. All while holding back a 10% reserve. We reached planing speed in 3.6 seconds, 20 came and went in 4.4 and we continued through 30 miles per hour in 5.6 seconds. With the long jack plate travel, we can get improved rough water handling. By dropping it all the way down, we can bury the engine in the water and drop the bow down a little more. We found it beneficial to run it right around the middle of the range for our slight chop. In calmer water, raise it up a little more to get a little more efficiency out of it. With a narrower 8 foot 2 inch beam, we not only get this good economy, but also the improved knife effect going through the water. The cool thing about driving this boat is that it's kind of two boats in one when it comes to turning. You can run it at cruising speeds and turn it like a regular V bottom. At higher speeds, because she has such a shallow aft dead rise, you can come in hot and kind of slide it. Made it pretty fun once I got the hang of it. Now, let's move on to her more pertinent features. We briefly mentioned the jack plate. This one comes up quite high and the boat is still maneuverable even with the skeg above the bottom of the boat, as seen here. Often we see the types that require the engine to be tilted along with the jack plate fully elevated. That causes a loss of steering that we don't experience here. And we also like how the power pole is mounted right to the plate. With an 11 degree dead rise and the flat running pad that continues up to the area of the console, this boat loves skinny water. Moving inside, this model has the optional stern seating. This, along with the 22 inch cockpit depth, plays well with the families. It also serves as a nice bolster and tow rail when fishing. A 40 gallon live well is in the transom. To one side is a chum well that keeps all the nasty stuff separated and draining overboard as the frozen baits melt. To the other side is a washdown box. Both the freshwater and raw water washdowns are fed to this box with quick connects for the hoses. The cap rails are well populated with rod holders. Just ahead, the leaning post has four rod holders, three drink holders, and to both sides are the tool holders. Of course, additional rod holders and spreader lights are just above. To the front is a flip down footrest. At the lower helm, there's a 12 inch display in the panel. To the side is the Evinrude Icon system, which is all fly by wire controlling for both upper and lower stations. And the wheel is connected to the engine's integrated power steering. The battery switches and ignitions are in this protected box, convenient and out of the way. Now this model obviously has the dual station top, and this version is by far their most popular. By having the operator standing on the lower console, this boat can still be trailered without having to disassemble anything, and it can fit in most dry rack storage facilities. Side decks measure in at 18 inches from the supports, 22 inches from the console itself. Inside the console, the 4 foot 1 inch headroom provides enough room for the wife or kids to use an optional porta potty, but the bigger folks probably won't. The Tarpa 26 is offered in two versions. One, it has the forward V seating with a casting deck and storage. Here, we have the open model with plenty of fishing room right up to the bow, but it can be changed over at any time with drop-in modules. There's even a pop-up dodger available. The anchor locker is quite large and it's accessed from a hatch both to the top and rear. And notice how the upper hatch lies flat, taking the strain off the hinges. The hatch is notched for the road to run through. An eight inch cleat lies just behind the pop-up nav light. 
Well, clearly, we've got a boat that works the flats easily enough, and with our choppy test day, she can also handle waves just as well. Pretty much a versatile workhorse, and with the Evernerd E-Tech G2, it gets a good balance of power and economy. And that's our test and inspection of the Tarpon 26 from Andros Boatworks. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.